I saw the play in its uh, third week with Art Carney and Walter Matthau, and I thought at the time, and still think, it probably is the best comedy ever written for the American stage. That is, it's almost a perfect comedy. It, uh, the levels of laughter are great. The introduction of uh, Felix and the playoff of Oscar are almost near perfect. And I've talked to Neil Simon about it, because I see Neil a lot. And he's probably proudest of that play. Well, when The Odd Couple opened uh, the film, I believe it was in 1968, I was eight years old, and I remember seeing the movie for the first time with my family at a drive-in. And um, it, I think it was, of course, being eight years old, there were things I, I didn't really understand, and there were things that I did. Um, but it, it was, even at that, it was magical just watching uh, Lemon and Matthau on, on the screen, and, and it was so funny. And uh, so that's, that's my first memory. When he got the script, for the odd couple of uh, uh, play. He was living on the beach and he called me and he said, would you come out and cue me on, on, uh, on the, I said, sure. So I went out there, I, I cued him and that was my, my first relationship with the odd couple. It has perfect, it has perfect comedy, perfect routine, perfect setups. The opening of the second act as a stage device, when Oscar, the sloppiest man in the world, comes home from work and Felix, who is now living with him, has turned that apartment into a gorgeous spectacle. It's spotless and white and clean and beautiful. And Oscar takes three steps forward, stops at the staircase and says, I'm home, dear. One of the greatest laughs in Broadway history. Neil Simon is the quintessential playwright of our times. I know it's comedy and people say it's light, but it's really not light, there's an underlayer. And as he told me once, every comedy he writes is based on tragedy. He was funny, deadpan funny. Wasn't yuck, yuck, yuck funny, he was deadpan. You know, uh, he, he really, he just makes sure that the writing is you know, it's so succinct. It's, it's almost like a dance, his writing, you know? And, and he just wanted it put out there the way it was written. He had a very big role in shaping everybody's performance. That's his play, and he owned the play, and he wrote the play, and he ran the play. But he ran it through Gene Sachs, who was the director. I think he also likes actors' input, meaning if they're bringing something specific, he can use that. Was Odd Couple his best play? I think it probably was. One of the things that always perplexed my father was the fact that there had to be a differentiation between drama and comedy. Uh, as a matter of fact, after he did The Apartment, one of his famous quotes was, why can't you do both? meaning in the same film, uh, which he did so seamlessly in the apartment. And it was one of the attributes that he was able to bring to pretty much every performance he ever gave. If you take a look at, uh, at, at Felix, there's marvelous pathos in this character. You're a wonderful guy, Oscar. You've done everything for me. If it weren't for you, I don't know what would have happened to me. You took me in here, you gave me a place to live, you gave me something to live for. I'm never gonna forget you for that, Oscar. You're tops with me. Pop has the ability to really weave some some pretty, as does Walter, by the way, pretty serious depth uh, in, into a comedic character. Now, a, a beautifully sketched, very three-dimensional character, uh, of course. But still, uh, this was always Pop's quandary. Why can't you play drama and comedy? The two should fit together seamlessly. And uh, if you take a look at that, uh, it really is one of the things that made Jack Lemmon such a brilliant actor. Jack was emotional, and he was a full of life with everything he did. And Jack was much more exuberant than Walter, much more excited about the profession. Both were serious, but Jack was, was really, he was a serious actor. Jack was wonderful. Jack took his comedy incredibly seriously. He would do something in a rehearsal and he'd say with a very serious face, is that funny? Is that, is that funny? Yes, that's funny. And then he'd go back and he'd do it and it was brilliant, you know but very serious. 
if, if somebody was ever to come to me and say, hey, I'm doing a scene with your old man tomorrow, well, you know, any advice? Um, I think the only advice I could give them would be, man, just enjoy every second of it, because it's gonna be one of the most wonderful experiences of your life. What you do is, is you prepare uh, everything that you know and go open with him and realize you're gonna work eight hours if there are eight hours that you're there. You're gonna work on the material and uh, on, 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 on what you're doing, and you're gonna work with a, the, an ultimate professional actor. You're gonna be with one of the greatest guys that ever walked the face of the earth, and that was pervasive in every performance that Pop ever gave. Pop was a human leprechaun. He breathed magic wherever he went. He loved people who loved what they did. He loved people who were good at what they did. He fed off it, he fed you. His generosity on camera was overwhelming. It was for you. Jack Lemmon was the hardest working actor I've ever worked with. And I've done over 200 television shows and about 15, 20 movies. The hardest uh, working man I've ever seen. I think uh, Jack is one of the most accommodating, most uh, loving people that I ever met. When, when it was your turn to be fed, that's who he gave everything to. And when the camera was not on him, he was sitting next to it, feeding you the lines. Having the opportunity to stand toe to toe with him in a scene or in a film or on stage, uh, you were a very, very lucky person because Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau were as good as it gets. If it's politics or, or sports or movies, theater or life or relationships, Jack will be right there. He'll be in your face. Jack is in your face. Every, every Christmas after the movie, he and Felicia would send me a cake from Beverly Hills, which was a lemon cake, which was specially baked for him at some famous lady's cakery. And it was, it was just a sweet thing for him to do. Every time he and Felicia were in town to see plays, and he would always try and find out if I was doing something and he'd come and see it. He was special. I think one of the things that I admired most about Jack Lemmon was the fact that he was one of the most emotionally generous people you would ever want to meet. And that's not just on screen, that's off screen as well. Um, and, and wherever Jack Lemmon went, without ever, having to without ever having to try to do it, he raised the bar. And it was just something that he was. Um, he was magical. And he really was a human leprechaun. And uh, it was one of the things I tried to emulate most in my life. And it was why I cherished every moment I had the opportunity to spend with him. Something that Pop did, as far as I know, before every take in every film or every entrance onto any stage, anywhere his entire career, he had two words that he used to say to himself. And those words were, magic time. And I remember being on the set of The Odd Couple and seeing Pop say those two words and just go to that wonderful place he was able to go and then march on camera and stand toe to toe with the man who would become his favorite working partner and his very best friend, Mr. Walter Matthau. Well, the first time I met Walter was for an interview in Miami. I was doing a local show in Miami. He had done a movie. He had come down to Miami, and the first thing he said when we finished is, want to go to Hialeah? <laughs> and we went to the racetrack. I think the fascination for gambling probably stems from the fact that his mother, having come over uh, at the turn of the century and worked in sweatshops and valued every dollar desperately, uh, became a, a ter you know great miser. And I think that that was his way of rebelling. You know, probably that's what a shrink would probably say, you know, uh, uh, just sort of having no respect for money. And it was his way of getting back at her. 
you know, bet 500,000 on the Super Bowl, you know. I don't know. Walter would have bet on two cockroaches crossing the, the floor. Who would, who, would, who would make the other side first? He'd bet on anything. Uh, when we were walking out, we went to the same dinner one night, a black tie dinner in, uh, in uh, L.A. And as we're walking out together, he said, I'll bet you $10 my car comes before your car. <laughs> we would take my grandmother, my, my father's mother, he didn't want her to disapprove of his gambling, so he would bet on every horse in the race, and he'd put a different ticket in every pocket. And no matter who won, he'd pull out the ticket, and he'd say, see, Mom? And she'd go, you should come here more often, Wally. He was a very easygoing man. He had a little gambling problem, but then who doesn't? There would be strange people out there on Thursday night <laughs> waiting for him to get his check. <laughs> Very Damon Runyon-esque. <laughs> Some people like to lose in life. Some people like to get hurt. He liked to lose. When it came to a deal, it wasn't that way. He didn't want to lose our deal. He just liked to lose the track. <laughs> he had been losing in basketball like 33 straight games, football getting wiped out, baseball destroyed, and he called his bookmaker. He said, I'm getting killed, I'm getting killed, murdered, I can't win anything. And the bookmaker said, <laughs> why don't you try hockey? And he said, what do I know about hockey? <laughs> uh, well, Walter always looked as though uh, he had done no work from the last rehearsal to this rehearsal. Um, but I am sure he he did. It just was very loose. Uh, he didn't make, you know, he didn't make any demands on himself, seemingly. He just let it happen. Well, that was, that was the appearance he gave. I'm not sure. He was so good at what he did. Walter, for instance, fitted so well with Neil's writing because Walter is a devil. I mean, he has a wicked personality. And uh, his put-downs of Jack in The Odd Couple were terrific. I've seen him in almost everything he's done, and, and uh, for a while, at the beginning, I always wondered whether he could do serious drama as well as he does comedy, because there's a difference in technique, you know, and uh, I think comedy's harder, I always had thought that. And I wondered about Walter, and then subsequently, he did some marvelous, marvelous things, as, as, as well as any dramatic actor could ever do. I was very close to him for years, and he was, uh, had, had the most the dry, driest sense of humor. And I think the only one he reminds me of is W.C. Fields. That seems like a strange combination, but they were both so angry underneath that they were funny. My father said that, uh, that the role of Oscar Madison was the plutonium that he needed to uh, become a star because he had he was really one of the stars that really broke down the barriers of, uh, you know, there were certain exceptions. There were like, you know, your Spencer Tracy's and people like that, but pretty much the Hollywood leading man stars, especially romantic leading men, were all, you know, they kind of looked like um, collar ads. And, uh, you know, my father was one of the, one of the first to break down those, those barriers. It's funny, he played a slob brilliantly but in, in real life, he was the most immaculate, beautifully dressed man you have ever seen. He, he was careful about he was careful about what he said. He was not bombast, bombastic, but he could play it. You know, he, he could play bombast well. Uh, he could be over the top well, but he wasn't an over the top person. The similarity between the character and the actor is the similarity between an actor who is acting something. Walter was nothing like that. Walter was very neat. Walter was very succinct. Walter was, was, uh, was an absolute gentleman. Walter was, was a man who loved music. He was a man who loved the finer things of life. 
And of course, uh, in, the, in the play, in the film, that's not the man he's playing. If someone said, would you like to work again with Walter Matha, in a heartbeat, I would love it. And I'd probably have more balls this time. Uh, he was, he was, uh, he was a character. If somebody asked me, if somebody asked me about Walter, preparing to work with Walter, uh, I would say, uh, be prepared, because uh, Walter is, is, is uh, sometimes off the wall. That's the strength of him as an actor. I mean, he will do things you never expect him to do. You know, it wasn't just, uh, it was his uh, versatility that was amazing, but it was also, and his longevity, because he was in important films in six different decades. Uh, but uh, uh, also, you know, what I had mentioned before, which is that I think he helped to break down the boundaries of what a leading man was and kind of paved the way for your Dustin Hoffmans or your Robert De Niro's or your Al Pacino's. And, I know from some interviews, um, those guys have said the same thing, which is really nice.